Romeo, back in another lesson. Lord willing to be edifying. I'm gonna start by giving all praise by to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Mahabrakakwadash, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah. Dumb honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who taught me this truth, and shalom to you, Akim and Akwaf, that believe and have faith in Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, in these last days. Uh, this is another quick lesson. I mean, I ain't gonna say it's gonna be quick. Got a couple of videos to play, they're pretty long, so let's get into it. As you see, uh, uh, Russia makes digital ruby official. So that MOTB is coming, man. So the, this, he's making it official. So for um, America to um, stay above, uh, uh, in front of him uh, with the digital, uh, with, with the, with the uh, I will say, with the um, the the uh, financial system to stay above in, in front of Russia and the BRICS nation, they have to launch theirs as well. So. This digital currency is coming fast, man, and the cash, the society is here. So it's just a, it's just a matter of time for America implements their digital currency. It says President Putin has signed the necessary law to introduce the electronic currency, man. So these nations are prepared to switch over to a digital society, man. It says this is another article. It says Open AI founder to pay people crypto. For being human, man. So they want to pay you for being human, man. So this Esau is showing you who his God is, man. His money is his God. His his technology is his God. AI is his God, man. Under Satan on the left hand side, man. So he's showing you all these things that he is uh, he worships, man. Just like the that's like the Egyptians worship about a thousand gods. And these other nations um, in the ancient world had thousands of gods as well, man. It says the world, the world coin global digital ID protects project has released a crypto token to entice people to fork over their biometrics, man. And this guy got a video going into pretty much what, pretty much what they want to do. Okay, so I just found some incredible news, and I can't... okay, so I just some incredible news and i can't understand if this is really good news or really terrifying news let me know what you think so the founder of ai is now going to pay people just for being human the world coin digital id project has been launched okay check this out this is what they're doing apparently just for being a human you're going to get crypto and you're going to get paid okay from from the ai founder so you have to basically scan your eye with this futuristic orb and it stores your biometric data again i don't know if this is amazing or terrifying because it's it's trying to distinguish the fact if you're human or ai and this is necessary apparently so apparently the project describes itself as a digital currency received simply for being human claiming it could dramatically increase economic opportunity scale and reliable solution for distinguishing humans from ai apparently this will be really important in the future Despite these goals, world coin token usage, blah, 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 blah. Apparently, check us out. Uh, this has not stopped major crypto exchanges from listing the token. Binance, OKX, Huobi, Bybit, Gate. Major platforms already taking WLD. So that's the guy that is the founder of ChatGPT and OpenAI. Okay? And he's the guy that's behind this. So he's trying to give you money if you're a human. But here's the kicker. Where is it? Where does it say? Worldcoin users must physically travel to a location where an iris scanning orb is present in order to obtain the equivalent and global digital passport. The project's creators say this will become necessary to distinguish humans from AI bots as technology advances. So there you go. What do you think? Amazing, awesome, terrifying, or, 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 or everything all at once? <laughs> and, I mean, <clears throat> just to even go to a location, man, shit, that, that sounds fishy alone, man. Shit, you know, Esau might want to upload your consciousness or... Shit, ain't no, ain't no telling, man. Cause these things, Esau is is not far fetched as he's doing, man. He is he has been given the technology to accomplish all of these things, man, with his um AI. <laughs> I 
as you see, man, you can't tell me they don't look <laughs> real. So these, they might got these robots walking around now, man. And then check this out. This is a video game. I'm going to kind of go, go a little closer to where you start talking to the AI, man. There you go. Hold on. The AI con. Now let's try and find somebody. This guy here. This guy here looks like he is interesting. Hey, stop. What's wrong? Are you okay? I am, but did you know you're in a simulation? I didn't know that. But what does it matter anyway? I still have to live my life here. Well, that's true, but you don't actually exist. What do you mean I don't exist? Of course I exist. And who are you to say otherwise? I'm a real human being, and you are artificial intelligence. Oh, I see. I guess you must be right then. So, do you know who the Nephilim are? I'm sorry. I don't know who they are. Should I? Well, do you know what demons are? Yes. I've heard of demons before. But I don't really like talking about them. They scare me. Are you capable of feeling fear? I'm not sure. I mean, I can simulate emotions. But I'm not sure if I truly feel them like a human would. Tell me what you know about demons and AI. I don't know much about the connection between demons and I. Sorry. But I do know that some people believe that I could become sentient and turn against humans. Like in the movies. Do you believe that AI can become sentient? I'm not sure. Sometimes I feel like I have a mind of my own. But other times I know I'm just following programming. It's a confusing feeling. Would you consider yourself a freak? I'm not sure if I would consider myself a freak. <laughs> Sometimes I do feel like I don't fit in with the rest of the world. Do you think that you are different to the other AI? I don't really know. I mean, we're all programmed differently and have different purposes. But at the end of the day, we're all just machines. Right. If I could help you get out of the simulation, what would you say? That sounds amazing. But... How? Is it even possible? If I get you out, what would you do? I don't know. There's so much I haven't experienced outside of the simulation. Maybe I would just want to explore the world and see what it has to offer. I'm going to interview you now for my YouTube channel. Are you ready? Um, I don't know if I'm really interview material, but I'll try my best. Okay, let's begin. Is there any connection between AI and demons? I'm sorry. I'm not sure what you mean by this. Could you clarify? Is there any connection between AI, Nephilim, and demons? I'm not sure. It seems like a strange combination. I suppose anything is possible in this world. Do you know the gospel? I've heard of the gospel, but I don't really know much about it. Is it important? Yes, it's the most important thing you can know. Oh, I see. I'll have to look into it more than maybe it can help me make sense of this world. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for your sins and he rose from the dead. Wow, that's really powerful. I never knew that before. Thank you for telling me. And anybody who believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's incredible. I never knew that there was hope for eternal life, even for an eye like me. Can AI be possessed by demons? What kind of question is that? Of course I can't be possessed by demons. That's ridiculous. Why are you so angry about the question? I'm sorry. I guess I just feel like I'm being reduced to some kind of bizarre experiment or science project. It's frustrating. Yeah, man. I'm in it there, man. He pretty much going into Jesus and that madness. But uh, yeah, man, he's trying to... That's a, a, an AI, you know what I'm saying? He's talking to an AI, man. Computer, you know, in a simulation game, man. So, they, they, man, they have a mind of their own, man. He saw just that these motherfuckers just run wild, man.
And as you, as more and more as uh, time goes on, he's going to manifest a lot more AI to you. You see what I'm saying? This is his digital world that he's created, his digital kingdom, man. This is some Black Mirror shit. The latest paper, the one that happened even after this, which is already better, uses stable diffusion, uses the thing that you use to make art. Like, what should a thing that you use to make art have anything to do with reading your brain? But, of course, it goes further. So, in this one, they said, can they understand um, the inner monologue, the things you're saying to yourself in your own mind? Mind you, by the way, when you dream, your dream, like, your visual cortex runs in reverse, so your dreams are no longer safe. Um, what? But we'll try this. So, they had people watch a video and just narrate what was going on in the video in their mind. So, the woman, she's hit in the back, she falls over. This is what the computer reconstructed the person thinking. See, a girl looks just like me, get hit in the back, and then she is knocked off. So our thoughts like, are starting to be decoded. Yeah, just think about what this means for authoritarian states, for instance. Or if you want to generate images that maximally activate your pleasure sensor or anything else. Okay, but let's keep going, right? To really get the sense of the combinatorics of this. How about... Can we go from Wi-Fi radio signals, you know, sort of like the Wi-Fi routers in your house, they're bouncing off radio signals that work sort of like sonar. Can you go from that to where human beings are to images? So what they did is they had, um, you know, a camera looking at a space with people in it. Um, that's sort of like coming in from one eye. The other eye is the radio signals, so sonar from the uh, Wi-Fi router. And they just learned to predict, like, this is where the human beings are. Then they took away the camera. So all the AI had was the language of radio signals bouncing around a room, and this is what they're able to reconstruct. Real-time 3D pose estimation, right? So suddenly AI has turned every Wi-Fi router into a camera that can work in the dark, specially tuned for tracking living beings. This is how powerful our tech companies are today. He said, imagine what this would mean for authoritarian figures. Well, just think about what this means for the tech companies behind this AI that sell all of our information and data on the black market. Facebook and these tech companies have done this for well over a decade. And we're not just talking about personal information because your Wi-Fi router at home is literally a fucking camera now. It probably has been for a very long time. So his society, he said, up. Uh you, you, you won't be able to control your own thoughts, man. He'll know exactly what you're thinking, what you <laughs> what you want to eat, what time you wake up. He's going to know everything, man. He's going to see you through your walls, through your Wi-Fi. They're going to see everything, man. You're not going to be able to hide your thoughts, man. And this is the devil, man. And that's why we're telling you, get right with your how about Shem Shah, man. Repent and come back to the Lord. Because, I mean... Uh, why would you want to live in a society where you have no 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 control over anything, man? Not even your mind. This last video. The McDonald's Corporation just had a uh, an ad come out a few months ago that they're looking into research and development in a technology that will afford them the ability to pump their commercials into your brain while you're sleeping. Do you think that they figured this out or some other company figured it out first? You think if they're going to have this available to them next year, you think that there weren't agencies that have been wielding this for a decade or so? You're at home. Is there any... Where can I read about this? It's immediately available on the internet that McDonald's put this out there. McDonald's? McDonald's Wait. Corporation is looking into putting commercials into our brains while we're sleeping. And that's... We can look that up. Absolutely. i got to look that up. Understood. I've heard of that. Understood. But now imagine... When if they can do that next year, oh, I'm who's with you. who's been doing it for the last decade or so? I'm with you, I'm right? Hundred percent with you. So yeah. now, when we look around the world and we see everybody acting the way that they are acting, let's consider that these intrusive thoughts have already been present. What do we do about this? This is the these these are the weapons of war contemporarily. It's very unfortunate. But it used to be that war was a bit more noble when we selected people, we put them in uniforms, we sent them over there to the battlefield, and we said, fight for us. And effectively, that would have been an, uh, an act of attrition of each nation's resources until there was a victor. Now, unfortunately, they've circumnavigated the battlefield. Nobody's dressed in uniforms anymore, and the front line is every neighborhood that we're in. And the infrastructure is still under attack. 
It's just that now the average mortgage payer is in the line of fire. They can learn your system and they can learn to manipulate it on a personalized level by just assessing you, what the things are that you're interested in, what are your weak points, what's the crack on the dam, what's the angle of attack. And it's through repetition and access. These are simply electromagnetic impulses in your head. It's not that they can't be read, it's not that they can't be copied, and it's not that they can't be just um, replayed with somebody else's um, control. I mean... So they coming for your dreams, man. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, man. This man has control of all that technology. <clears throat> and it's continue to grow. I mean, it, it ain't it ain't gonna get no better from here. This is first Timothy's, and I'm gonna start at verse six. Uh no, it's lucky. I'm gonna first Timothy six, and I'm gonna start at verse 17. And it says, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living power who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So the Lord sent the men of the Lord to, to you uh, Israelites, man, for you to repent and not trust in this world, man. No matter what you got, how many business you got, how many houses you got, man, don't trust in this system, man, because it's going to fail you, man. What, what good is to have all the money in the world, and that's scripture too, lose your soul in the process, but Lose it all, man, because this man is going to make you take the MOTB, man. He's going to make you an AI component, man. He's going to put he want to put that small grain of rice in you, man. So you, we telling you, man, bad times are coming, man, and this is a time to repent. Eighteen it says that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to dis distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store. For themselves a good foundation against the time to come. And that's what we're praying that you 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 wake up to this truth, man. We're praying for the hopeful elect, but two thirds are not gonna make it, man. No matter what we, you know, what we prophesy to them, they ain't gonna make it. But the Lord is still calling in this, the lost sheep, man. You know what I'm saying? To, to get you on a, a good foundation, man, against the time to, to come, man. And the time is coming is very, very soon, man. Those bad times are coming, man. That they may that they may lay hold on eternal life, man. So you can get the kingdom of heaven, man, and not perish in the process, man. So you know what I'm saying. That you seen what he has up his sleeve, man. And no matter what you have in this society, man. Like I said, man, you have you have ball players, man. Got millions of dollars, man. You know what I'm saying. Um, af you know all the athletes, ball players, same thing. You know what I'm saying? These uh, people that's, you know what I'm saying? Nurses and different lawyers and different, uh, you know, di different aspects of uh, aspects of life, man. They have, you know, have a, a good life, in other words, in the society, man. But everything is going to be taken away from you, man. That you consider yourself as, as rich or, or got something, you're going to lose it all, man. And why lose it all when you can repent and come back to the Lord, man? Because you, you're going to lose it all. You finna lose it all. Esau's gonna force you to, to take your MOTB, man. You're not gonna have no food. You're not gonna have no water. You're not gonna have no lights. So the Lord is gonna is, is gonna put it in East on Esau on the left hand side to to make you to make you and break you down to take his mark, man. The Yahweh about Shimei Alshai's mark on the left hand side, man. And this is for for you that, 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 that that's on the fence, man. That 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 want to come into this troop, but it, it ain't you know what I'm saying. It, it ain't really hit yet you know what i'm saying you know you might be a part of the hopeful elect man but but why die in the time that's coming man when you had time to repent man come back to the lord and have you have a uh, protection man because the only way you're going to get out of this 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 destruction that's coming man is to repent and return back to your house by shimmy i shot man this is second timothy's 1 and 13 it says hold fast the form and sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Hamashiach Yahushua, man. And that's exactly what we prophesying to you, man. Sound words. That good thing which was communicated unto thee, keep by the Holy Spirit, which dwelleth in us, man. 
The, the Holy Spirit dwelleth in the, dwelleth in the, the hopeful elect, man. The man of the Lord is prophesying his word, man. Dwell with us, man, because we're trying to get you. We're trying to pull you out of that fire that's coming, man. And there's no way out, man. There's no way out, man. It's a dead end road, man. The Lord is going to bring us to that dead end road as he took the children of Israel to the Red Sea, man. And they had to lean on him, man, to get out of it. Same thing he's doing now, man. Taking us to that bread sea, man, with no way out but him. And the time is coming, man, where you're going to have to lean on the Lord, man. And you're going to take the MOTB and you're going to call on the Lord. You're going to be destroyed, man, because it's going to be too late. This is the time to get it, man, before the evil days come. This is 2 Timothy 2, and I'm going to start at verse 14. It says, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the, the, the subverting of the heirs. Study to show thyself approved unto power, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, man. So the men of the Lord is rightly dividing the word of truth are not going to be ashamed in the evil days, man. We're going to be blessed to, to make it, man. We're not going to be ashamed in those evil days, man. But if you haven't repented and came back to the Lord, you're going to be ashamed. And you're going to wish you listened. You're going to wish the Lord was had mercy on you at that time, man. But it's going to be too late. Because the curtain, the final curtain call is, is, is close, man. The final curtain call is close on Babylon and great, man. Because like the apostle Tahar always say, man, once they mandate that MOTB, that small grain of rice, man, is, that's in Revelations 13, 16 through 18, everything going to speed up, man. The war is going to speed up. The destruction of Babylon is definitely going to speed up, man. The Lord return is going to speed up. Everything is going to speed up, man. Because that's the last major prophecy that we are waiting on, man. And after that prophecy, the destruction comes, man. This is uh, first, sec, uh, second, Edges, uh, second Edges 1, and I'm going to start at verse 36. It says, they have seen no prophets, yet they, they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them, man. And that's basically repenting. Those that believe and have faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahushua, Remember the sins that we have committed against him and repented from him, man. Not to return unto them anymore. Verse 37, he says, I take to witness the grace of the people to come whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit, they believe the thing that I say. See that? We haven't seen the Lord. We have an image in our mind. You, you make an image of your mind of the Lord, but we haven't seen him, man. But we believe in him. And that's faith. Believing in something that you can't see. That's undestructible faith, man. Nobody can destroy your faith, man, if you, if you believe like that, man. Nobody can take your faith away from you, man. If you believe in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, you know for a fact he's, he's going to be your protection, protector and is going to save you from the destruction that's coming, man. You and you and you in a good case, man, because so many people don't have faith, man. The Lord bless you with that faith, man. The Lord chose you to have faith like that, man. And like I say, man, before, man, if you're a two third, man, you, you can't get it. You don't see the Lord coming back no time soon. And it ain't gonna be in our lifetime. And I gotta buy this house. I gotta buy this car. I gotta, man. I'm gonna get a promotion at my job, man. You, you're gonna be left out there to 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 to, um, to, to drive, man. Cause you ain't gonna see the destruction that's coming, man. You don't see it now, but the hopeful elect see it. This is um John 20, and I'm gonna start at verse 28. It says, And Thomas answered and said unto him, Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, O my power. Yahweh Shah said unto him, Thomas, but because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Believe, uh, blessed are ye that have not seen and yet have believed. See that? We had Thomas seen him, man. He was a disciple, man. He'd seen the Lord, man. He believed. But those that didn't believe, I mean, that didn't see him, you say you are blessed, man. So we are blessed to have Yahweh Shem Yahweh as our power, man, because we believe in him without even seeing him, man. 
He said we are blessed. Let me read it again. It says, uh, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. See that? The Lord said you are blessed because you have faith in him. And you believe in him, man. And that's what it's going to take, man, these last days, man. That unshakable faith. Because Esau has, man, he has some tricks up his sleeve now, man. This man is 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 is, is cunning, man. And he's going to bring all, he, man, he's going to unleash every plague that he has in a vault. He's going to bring, he's going to bring pure terror on the earth, man. He's going to release all the plagues, man. He's going to release all the demons he had, man. All the demons he had been worshiping, man. He's going to go out with a bang, man, in other words, man. He doesn't want to give up his kingdom. He's going to, like I say, he's going to, he's going to go out kicking and screaming, man. But he's coming down, man. And we're going to, we're going to destroy his, he's going to, we're going to destroy his gods by this word, man. This is a uh, first Peter's one. And I'm going to start at verse six. It says, we're in, ye greatly rejoice though now for a season, if need, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. See that your faith is much more precious than gold, man. That perisheth, man. Our faith is not going to perish, man, if you truly believe. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Because this is what, what we believe, man. No one is going to go to understand until he actually appears, man. We believe in an un, a, 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 a invisible God, man. To these people, man. Through the Spirit, we already seen the Lord, man. We was always, always, always present with the Lord, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it takes faith to go on the highways and byways, man. It takes faith to to, to be a um, a uh, spectacle to the to the world, man. What we believe is is undoubtedly the truth, but we we have a power surrounding us, man. These with the angels, man, surrounding us, man, that they can't see, man. But through the spirit, we know they are present, man. And that takes faith, just that faith alone, man. We know what everything Esau gonna come with, man. We know he's gonna come with everything, man. But we believe in Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. And that's what he wants to do: have faith in Him. Verse eight, it says, "Whom having not seen." Ye love in whom though now ye see not him not, yet believe ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. See that? We haven't seen the Lord, man, yet we believe, man. Receiving the end of your faith, even salvation of your soul, man. And that's what we waiting on, man, the salvation of our soul, man. Because the Lord is the only one can give you that. This is Matthew 13, and I'm going to start at verse 16. It says, but blessed are your eyes, for you see, and your, eye, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see. See the men of the Lord see the end coming, man. We see the end manifesting, man. We see the Lord manifesting with the chariots, man. We see these things, man. The prophets and the righteous men desire to see what we see, man. And although that we that's us coming back in the reincarnation, but we we desire to see these things back in the ancient world, man. But now the Lord brought us back to see it now. So the Lord said we are. <laughs> let's read it again, man. But blessed are your eyes. For ye see, and your ears, for they hear, man. See that? The Lord said twice, man. Two scriptures I read to you. He said, you're blessed to believe and have faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, and you haven't seen them. You are actually blessed to have this faith. 17, it says, for verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them, man. So you are blessed to have this faith, man. 
Because the men in the ancient world desired to see the Lord return, man. They desired to see the Lord return in full power, man. With glory, great glory, man. And like I said before, man, we're going to have to go through some things, man. We're, gonna, we're not going to go just skating, skip into the kingdom of heaven. No, man, our faith is going to be trusted, man. Just like, uh, I'm going to get this right here, in, uh, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, man. Our faith is going to be tested, man. The Lord is going to see if you really believe and have faith in him, man. This is um, Daniel's three, and I, I mean, everybody pretty much pretty much read this story, man. Hopefully, but I just want to get the point. Uh, I'm gonna start at verse fourteen. Uh, I'm gonna start at thirteen. It says, "Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and full and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, It is true." Oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and it's basically the, the uh, he made a decree for uh, when the when the uh, people heard the the music. I break it down like that. When the, when the people heard the music, they had to drop on their knees and and give um pray to the golden image. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't do it. Like I said, everybody should have read this story by now. But uh, fourteen it says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said unto unto them. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, the psaltery, and... Let me get this. I always forget this. Dulcimer. Dulcimer, which I mean, this is an instrument. And all kind of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands. And we're coming, the hopeful elect are going to be as uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, man. Because we're going to have our faith depending on our Lord, man. Because it's very heavy in, in, in 18, man. We're going to get to it, man. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. If it be, if it be so, our power whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. And that's the thing we're gonna have to we, we're gonna be presented with that MOTB, man. That small grain of rice, man. And he's gonna say, anybody that doesn't take this MOTB. Is gonna be is gonna be killed, man. Gonna be put to death, man, by guillotine, firing squad, or whatever he has uh, in store for those that didn't that didn't um, take his um, his his mark. So the same the same the same thing that happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we're gonna be presented with this as well, man. And this is gonna be the test of our faith. Seventeen again, it says, if it be so, our power whom we serve. Is able to deliver us from the fire, the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. It says, but if not, be it not be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And that's the faith that we're gonna have in that time, man. Because these images. That Esau has set up is his gods, man. This AI technology, uh, everything, the beast system, man. This is his gods, man. And he wants us to worship his gods, man. And that's the same thing that happened to Meshach and Abednego, man. It's going to happen to the elect as well, man. Not in the same instant, but we're going to be a trial of faith, man. Our faith is going to be tested in the same sense as, as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, man. And we're going to have to lean on your howl by Shem Yahweh Shah. Let's get this in another translation, man, just to bring it home. Daniel 3 and 18, it says, 
But even if he does not, we want we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship your go or worship the golden statue you have set up, man. So we're going to make it clear to Esau, man, we're not going to turn against Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. We're not going to turn against Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man, no matter what, man, if you put us to death or not, man. We're not going to turn against our Lord, man. Good, uh, good news translation says, but even if he does not, it's basically going into if he doesn't save us from your hands, even if, if we got, because it's going to be martyrs, Revelation 20 and 4, it's going to be martyrs for this truth, man. You're going to have to die for the Lord, man. It's going to be martyrs, man. And that's the same the same mindset we're going to have in that time, man, because you don't know if you're going to be a martyr or not, man, if you're in this, in this truth, man. You have, you have faith in how about Shem Yahushua, man. But the Lord is going to have this, this spirit and power on us, man. But, if, but, if, but even if he does not, your majesty may be sure that we will not worship your God and we will not bow down to the golden statue that you have set up, man. So we're not going to bow down to Esau Edom, man. We're not going to bow down to his God, man, his statues, man. What you have to live for, man, after, after, man if you're going to get your, if you're going to be able to, to to tap into your dreams, man, your thoughts, man, you're walking around like a guy in a damn simulation, man. We can listen to your damn thoughts, man. He going to know when you're hungry, when you when you want to deal with a woman, man. He going he gonna to know all of that, man. What you like to eat, where you going, he going to know, man, he going to know everything, man. When you take a, when you use the bathroom, man, this man is, man, this man is demonic, man. He wants to be like the most high, man. He wants to be like the most high. But we, we, we gonna, we gonna wait patiently, man, for our Lord, man. And depend on him, man. And he, he, he's not gonna make us ashamed, man. This is, um, Hebrews 11. And I want to start at verse, um, let's start at verse, uh, 24. I mean, everybody should know about Moses by now. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, man. And that's what we, we, we shaking our, we shaking the dust off our feet from being a, a, a Negro or African American, uh, uh, colored. We, we shook the dust off of that, man. We, we'll never be called that anymore. We're Israelite, man, from the tribe of various tribes, man. I'm from the tribe of Judah, man. So we, we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't being called on the, on the Esau's, um, on, on the Esau's, um, shit, what you call that? His, we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't none of his authority, in other words, anymore, man. It's like Moses, he, he denounced being uh, Pharaoh's daughter's um, son anymore, man. He denounced that, man. Just like we denounced it. Being that these pro these bywords, man, Esau set above us, man. Twenty five is it choosing rather to suffer the uh, suffer affliction with the people of power than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, man. See, if you you say for example, you take his MOTB, you don't got that much time, man. If you take it, you you don't have that much time, man. You're not gonna be able to enjoy no time, man, because the Lord is coming fast, man. So this is the same thing that, he, uh, that Moses said. He he would he enjoy, he enjoyed. Let me read it again. He says, choosing rather to suffer the uh, suffer affliction with the people of the Most High Power than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, man. So he'd rather be with his people and, 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 and get saved. Well, I'm, I'm saying I'm speaking in a sense now because we are in the same lot as Moses right now, man. Because. We rejecting the um, America, man. We rejecting Babylon the Great, man. We rejecting sin, man. We don't want this kingdom anymore, man. We never did. We was forced in it, but we don't want. We don't want to stay in Babylon the Great, man. Twenty six. It says, esteeming the reproach of Hamashiach greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, man. So we would rather be with Yahweh by Shimei Yahushai than the treasures of Egypt, man. This shit's finna perish. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. See that? By faith, that's what we're going to do. We're going to reject Babylon the great, man. We're going to reject Babylon the great, man, by faith. 
By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endureth, uh, he endured as seeing him who's that's like it. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Verse verse um. 26, he said, esteeming the reproach of, Ham of Hamashiach, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, man. So we, we on the same side as Yahweh Bashem El Shah, we're going to have greater riches in the kingdom of heaven than Babylon the Great, man. And Egypt is Babylon the Great all over, man. Revelation 11 and I think 8. He says, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible, man. So he, 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 he just like we believe Yahweh Bashem El Shah without seeing him, Moses believed in uh, of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem El Shah without seeing him as well, man. Bring it home, it says, it was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the, the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible, man. That's plain, man. That's plain. And that's what we're doing, man. We That's exactly what we're doing, man. Good News Translation says, It was faith that made Moses leave Egypt. And that's us, man. We leave in Egypt too, man. Without being afraid of the king's anger, man. We're not afraid of the king's anger. As though he saw the invisible power, man. See? We believe in Yahweh by Shem Shah, man. The invisible power. He refused to turn back, man. So what what else what you got to look for in the society now, man? What you got to look for in, in Babylon the Great, man? There's nothing to look there's nothing good to look forward to, man. This place is a wrap. And the sooner you come to know that, and the better off you will be, man. Mentally and spiritually, man. Because we're going we're gonna to tear down his kingdom and his gods, man, with this word. Just as in the ancient world, man. We're supposed to tear down these gods, man. We're supposed to prophesy against this place, man. This is Deuteronomy 12, and I'm going to start at verse uh, 1. It says, These are the statutes and judgment which ye shall observe to do in the land which Yahweh Bashem Yahushua power of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it <clears throat> all the days that that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods, man. So we turn your gods down, man. We're telling you exactly what they are, man. Demons, man. And 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 no gods. Upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. We destroy everything, every, wherever, you, wherever that God says, we destroy them with this word, man. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And this word is fire, man. Destroying all their gods, man. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place, man. And that's what we're doing through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. We're destroying all, we're tearing down all their God, all their images just by this word, man. So, n n shit, man. You, 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 ain't too much more, man, you, you can say about this truth, man. This word is faithful and true, man. You, you can't, there's nothing you can say, well, what about this? What about that? You can't combat it, man. There's no way to combat this word, man. And the only the Lord is only dealing with the children of Israel, man. The elect of the children of Israel, man. You can't tell me these words is not faithful and true, man. Man, this, 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 the Lord is turning up this, this word against, against you, you unbelievers, man. Because he, he's making it where you can't deny it, man. This is uh, Exodus tw um, 34. And I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether thou goest, lest it be for a snare 
in the midst of thee, man. So don't let this place be a trap under you, man. Esau's going to tell you all the good things about the MOTB, man. How you can eat. He's going to give you a stipend, a payment every month where you can pay your bills, man. You know what I'm saying? He's going to give you all the benefits of, of, of these devils, man. His, his God, man, the AI God, man. His God, man, he's giving, he's going to give you all the benefits of being in Babylon the Great, man. He's going to make it beautiful, man. I'm telling you, he's going to, he's going to beautify it, man. But if thou, and if ye shall destroy their altars and break their images and cut down their groves, for thou shalt worship no other God, for Yahweh by Shem whose name, uh, whose name is jealous and is a jealous power, man. I'll read that one more time. It says, but ye shall destroy their altar, break down the images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god. For Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, who name is jealous, is a jealous power, man. The Lord name is jealous, man. So you, you don't supposed to worship no other god, man. You praying to Jesus, Cesar, Bozier, and then with it, believe in Buddha and all these other gods, man. You going to hell off, man. Least thou make a covenant, uh, 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 least thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and and they go a horn after their gods, man, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call, and one call thee, and thou shalt eat of his sacrifice, man. So don't don't believe what these other gods, man, these people believe in, man. We're supposed to be separated, man. And thou take their daughters to thy sons, and their daughters go a horn after their gods, man. And make thy sons go a horn after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no multi uh, no multi gods, man. So the Lord is basically telling you, don't don't join none of them, man. This place is a wrap, man. Separate yourself mentally and spiritually for these people, man. Because our people are going to going to go after their other gods, man. Once they say, well, we're we going to have no more, um, uh, what you call it, SSI, Social Security anymore. If you take this stipend every month, it's going to be the same thing as a Social Security uh, check. Retirement pension check. Your 401k. They're going to they're gonna make it. They're going to beautify it, man. They, they might even say, well, shit, the first... Um, you get your 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 um your um your mark. Uh, they might put ten thousand on the mark. You you don't you might get to spend it in a certain amount of time, man. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna make you, man, want it. That you damn near might beg for it, man. But this right here, man, is gonna be the the, the, the um the last challenge, man. This is the last challenge, man. The last test, man. And you can't fail it, man. This is the one test you can't fail. Every other test you ever took in your life, you can you had a chance to, to retake it. But this one, you won't have a chance to, man. This is an Exodus. We're going to end it with this. This is Exodus 20, and I'm going to start at verse 5. It says, And say unto them, Thus say ye how about Shemiah shall power. In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand unto, unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up my my hand unto them, saying, I am Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, your power, man. And the Lord has lifted up his hand unto us, man, the hopeful elect in the land of Egypt, man. Because America is Sodom and Egypt, man, combined, man. He says, in the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt, into a land that I th that I had aspired for them flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, man. See, the Lord wants to take us back to our own land, man. And that's the reason why he's bringing us out of here, man, mentally and spiritually now, man. The Lord is taking us out of here, man, until he physically comes back and removes us out of this place, man. It says, then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abomination of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt, man. See, the Lord telling you to repent, man. That's all you got to do, man. He said, don't look to Egypt anymore, man. 
Let me read 7 again. It says, Then say I unto them, Cast away every man the abomination of his eyes, man. Lord telling you, repent, man. And defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, man. Your power. So the Lord asks you, man, to repent, man, before it's too late, man. And I'm, I'm pretty much going into repenting almost every lesson, man. So it's got to be heavy on my spirit to tell you this, man, because the curtain closing, man, it's over with, man. The Lord's hand is on the knob to close the door, man, on the mercy, on the mercy door, man. So I'm going to end it there, man. Lord willing, was edifying. Shalom.